Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see you uh, awake, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, as someone just wrote. Ha ha. Uh, it's good to have you with us this morning on Sunday morning. Um, if you're in the chat thingy, I don't know if you're seeing the same thing I am, but it looks like uh, at least my chats are being repeated uh, on YouTube and some of your other ones. I don't know. I don't know if, if it is. If it looks like it to you, I'm sorry. I don't know why it's doing that, um, but... Uh, I'm seeing it repeated over and over. It's like, ah, driving me nuts. Tech stuff, eh? I love it. All right, uh, let's get into some fun stuff here. Um, let's see what I've got next. We've got, oh, right. I don't have a problem with caffeine. I have a problem without caffeine. So, ah, enjoy your coffee this morning. Mm -mm -mm. Don't you guys miss church coffee? <laughs> I don't, because I have it here. Uh, by the way, if anybody is out of coffee, please let me know because um, I got to place an order soon. I have some here, but uh, I need to place an order for more. So just let me know if you need a, a, a bag or two and that'd be great. Um, let's see what else. Here we go. Birthdays. We got a bunch of birthdays. We got Leah. So happy birthday, Leah. Uh, and that's uh, today. Oh, my goodness. That is today. And Linda L. Uh, on February 3rd. Robinson in Pakistan, uh, February 4th. Brenda W. on February 5th. And Megan S. on February 6th. So there you go. Happy birthday to you all. Uh, a couple of things to pray for. Um, pray for a family. I'm not going to name who it is. Uh, there's a family who just lost uh, uh, a young person in their family, and it, they're just devastated. This is a blind side, didn't see it coming. And just pray for them. God knows who they are. Don't need to ask details. Just it's a brutal loss. So uh, spoke with the family last night, and it's no, not anyone from our church, but <clears throat> it's in the KW area. And also uh, pray for a Pakistani woman. Um, Robinson posted on his uh, page, and I don't think it was made public. The good, good thing. Uh, but there's a woman who uh, was just accused of blasphemy. Um, it was part of his one of his students that he's had, and uh, basically blasphemy is a death sentence, and it, it's just it's just brutal, just brutal. So pray for those that are having a hard time uh, in this uh, pandemic. Uh, this is not a, an easy time emotionally. Um, so yeah, lots of stuff there. Okay, next, uh, we're going to have our after church coffee. So have your coffee and join us in our Zoom call immediately following the service. Um, not at 1115. It's whenever we finish, just a couple of minutes after, especially if I'm at my desk here. It's like within under a minute, I, I switch over, turn off the recording and then go over to Zoom. So join us for just a couple of minutes, even if you can pop in, just say hi and then leave. No problem. But it is really fun to connect, uh, even if it's just for a quick moment and yeah. Uh, welcome you to do that and if you didn't get the weekly email uh send me a facebook message and i'll copy and paste the link to you uh at the start of zoom uh and I'll, I'll be watching for the messages on my facebook account and you can join us as well especially if you're not local to us here we'd love to have you here uh annual meeting is next sunday right after the service there won't be a zoom call uh for after church coffee but there will be a membership zoom call as we have to have our annual meeting the reports were emailed out so please read those through ask your questions ahead of time please it'll speed up the meeting <laughs> i know they're quick already but um unnecessary questions that could have been asked in advance um Please do them because this is this is not about blindsiding. If uh, anyone with a surprise question that you've been bottling up, that's not fair. I hate it. And you hate it, and then we end up arguing in an unnecessary way. So put your questions out as best you can in advance. I sent you the email for the leadership team uh, directly. So there you go. Uh, donations. So hey, uh, don't forget to uh, support if you enjoy what you're. Uh, participating in here uh, with hope fellowship online if you're popping in every once in a while hey um would you like to support us we we could use it and uh it uh, really helps us stay going and anyway it means a lot so i, I hope you'll do that um, also, uh, when you're watching, click, uh, like if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, and if you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button. Um, it does move our feeds up some search engine. So people do search for us because somebody mentioned hope fellowship, then, uh, it, it rises to the top faster. So let's see who chimed in this morning. 
Uh, we've got me, 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 because it's repeating. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. James and Trudy, yay. Uh, good to see you guys from Kitchener. I kept saying Guelph before. I didn't realize you guys have moved. Uh, John and Brenda from Kitchener. Uh, Gary's Lens uh, Photography, watching from the family room. Yay. Dan and Ellen, bright eyed and bushy tailed, as his dad used to say. <laughs> uh, Mark and Joy in Guelph. <clears throat> yes, it's great to be together. Even though this temporary situation, uh, we have to do it via video. Um, good morning from New Hamburg, uh, Debbie and Jerry. Uh, Courtney from Kitchener. Hope your kids are watching. I warned you. Uh, Jennifer uh, and family tuning in from Elmira. Janet uh, from Kitchener. Um, there's me repeating again. And oh my goodness, what a lot of repeat. This is frustrating. Uh, let's see if I can find some new comments uh, as I scroll to Norma. Good morning, Norma uh, from St. Jacobs, Becky and Wayne. Hey, hey, Wayne, hope you're doing well. Uh, I haven't given you a shout out for a while. So, hey, good morning. Uh, miss you, man. Uh, Wilf and Linda, good morning. Pete, he says, hey, one day he'll be a farmer. He'll spell it H-A-Y. Uh, Ken and Francis in uh, Jakobstetl. Uh, yep, you're not far from there at all. Um, Brendan and John already. That's a repeat, repeat. Oh, man. Hopefully next week he doesn't do this. Um, what else? Karen, good morning. Yep, there's a new one. Um, keep going here. Yep, almost done. Uh, Becky, got you already. I know I saw Wayne and Jackie. There you are. And Ron and Sharon, good morning. Um, and then we have, who else? Uh, I think that's it. I'm, I'm going to do one quick scan. I think we got everybody. If I missed you, I'm really... Alex from Ottawa. Yay, good. I saw you there coming at the last minute. Um, yep, there we go. All right. And then, oh my goodness. Uh-oh. Do you know what? I, I can't read them all. It's just I'm, I'm really trying to figure out what the new comments are. So we'll, uh, we'll come back to it later. Oh my goodness. I'm going to hit refresh because that's frustrating. Okay. All right, let's get into some fun stuff. Um, this morning, we got some awesome worship music, so uh, chime in um, and listen in. The, these songs are intentional. These, these songs are really, really good. Um, they're kind of tying into the theme of my message today, and you'll really enjoy it. Hey, Drew, I see you coming in there now. There we go. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. Um, okay, so uh, we got... Uh, Robinson from Pakistan singing Open the Eyes of My Heart. Jennifer uh, singing This is Eternal Life. And uh, Melissa and Lori are doing Never Once. Um, each of these songs have a powerful message. Maybe one of the messages will hit you. So let's, let's get going on this. And I hope you enjoy. Here's our music. In John 17, Jesus says, This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, just as we are one, I and them, and you and me, that they may be perfected in unity. This is eternal life.
This is eternal life That I may know you Open up my eyes to my glory in you May your love become
Thank you so much, everyone, for your music uh, contributions. Uh, each one of those songs dealt with um, Christ already being in us, never abandoning us, and the encouragement to open our eyes to see what's there. Um, I hope you enjoyed those. Um, uh, a couple more hellos. Nancy from London, good to see you there. And I noticed that it's not repeating online because I opened up the YouTube chat and I could see nothing was going on there. Um, which is great. Corey, good morning. From, I see you there. And then uh, Rob and Joan, I see you. And John, good to see you here in Elmira. Um, and uh, yeah, it's good. Finally, it's working. Seems, oh, on my end, it's all repeating, but oh well. Uh, not for you guys, which is great. Okay, kids. Uh, if you got your kids around, this is going to be a fun kid story. It ties in with my message this morning that, uh, yeah, I'll let the story happen first and then we'll talk about it. So, Let's have a kid story with uh, Lori, Simon, and Avery. So I hope you'll enjoy this. Here we go. No. Nope. Where is that cat? Franklin, are you under here? Franklin! Kitty, kitty, kitty! Are you in the dryer? Kitty? some pie. Have you seen my cat? I have looked everywhere. I've looked in boxes and in cupboards and underneath everything. 
anything and I just cannot find my cat. And I have asked God, I prayed and I prayed, dear God, please bring my cat back. And I still don't have my cat. I guess God just doesn't care about me. I don't think he listens to my prayers at all. Who is that? Somebody's at the door. Hmm. I wonder who it is. <gasps> Looking for something? Ever since I saw the lost cat sign, I've been looking for it. Where have you been? I gave up on never finding him again! Thank you! Would you like some pie? Of course I'd like some pie! Oh, come on in! Yay! God did hear my prayers after all! I thought he didn't have any interest in helping me or didn't listen to what I was asking or saying, but he was working behind the scenes all that time and finding my cat for me. Thank you, God. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was great. Oh, my goodness. So, <laughs> if you didn't catch the lesson because you're laughing too hard, uh, the, kind of the, the neat part of the story is that God is working behind the scenes when we pray. We may not think he's listening to us or answering our prayers. And that particular story, the cat's found. But thank you, Lori, Avery, and Simon for, uh, for that. And uh, one day you will get your pie. So anyway, I thought that was great. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, uh, too, too funny. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's see what's going on here. What's next? We've got navigating forward, part five. Um, this this series, I don't know if you're catching it, but it is loaded with wisdom, um, loaded with personal life lessons that we can learn from uh, from these scriptures that we're covering. Um, th this is about how do we strategically plan our future. I know when we started this series in January, in the beginning of January, there was a sense of, uh-oh, what's going to happen this year? Uh, can it be any worse than last year? <laughs> um, uh, what's going to happen in the world? What's going to happen with my job? And or what can I plan for? And I think there's some key foundations that have to be considered. And I think, well, that's why I'm doing the series. And some of the things that we're going to talk about, today's topic is going to be, Having the eyes to see, checking your prescription or your blind spots. How well do you see? Um, and then so far we've covered how to navigate forward. you got to look at our attitude. We, it begins with contentment. Uh, number two, we learn from those who have gone before us. And we, we took three weeks to cover the story of Joseph in the Old Testament in Genesis. And that was really good. There was a lot of uh, details there. And probably some parts of the story you forgot about or never knew were part of the story of the life of Joseph. Because we only hear about some of the key big points. But there's much more going on behind the scenes that's been shared with us through the history of the scriptures. And today I want to talk about having eyes to see, to check our prescription or blind spots. I know that... Uh, some of you, me included, there are times where we didn't want to have glasses and then we realize we need them. Or if you have glasses, pretty soon you start squinting more and more and, oh no, I need a new prescription because it's just not quite right. Or even worse, <laughs> that point where you get to where I need reading glasses and uh, these ones are fine. And eventually uh, what I have now is a three level one so I can see far kind of close and then book like computer and then and then and book i never thought i would like trifocals and i i love them uh, got used to them pretty quick but don't be afraid of them so anyway this is about checking your prescription what are you seeing what are you focusing on um in fact this next story that uh we're going to talk about from the book of genesis um i remember um reading this old uh story book called the picture bible way back when i was a kid i still have a couple on the shelf here um, but this was a cartoon Bible. It was my favorite. In fact, somebody uh, from th that I used to pastor a long time ago messaged me uh, recently out of the blue asking, hey, what was that Bible called? And it was this one. It was the picture Bible. 
But uh, the reason I bring this up is because I remember in my first year of Bible college, oh my goodness, we're going through a survey of the Old Testament and uh, a question was brought up, well, what was the name of this certain person? And well, I don't know what, what his name was or where exactly the story was, but I knew what he looked like. <laughs> Can you believe that? I knew what the guy looked like because I remember the story in my head from the comic book. He was standing on a wall looking out. And anyway, that it just reminded me of that. So I just thought I'd point that out. Some of you have grown up with this uh, picture Bible. And if you haven't heard of it, it's it's worth the read. It's a great way to rip through all the key stories of Scripture in a very fast-paced way. Uh, I loved it. So great for kids, great for adults. Um, anyway, there we go. So here's the story. This is going to be a doozy. Um, in fact, I, 2 Kings 6, I'm starting at verse 8, but verses 1 to 7 is kind of a fun one. Um, there are many hidden stories or forgotten stories or stories you've just never heard. They're odd. They're, what? Why is that story in the Bible? Or, no way, that can't be in the Bible. <laughs> and uh, uh, did you ever hear the floating axe head? Yeah, there's a story, and this is right here, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. Um, these guys are uh, digging away, and they're chopping up wood, and some dude loses his axe head in the water in a river. And he screams, oh no, that was a borrowed axe head, which means he was pretty poor. So having to replace it, would he can't afford that. So this guy, uh, Elisha, he, uh, he says to the guy, where'd you lose it? And so Elisha then takes a stick, puts it on the water, roughly where the axe head went down, and the axe head floated up to the top. Uh, either it was a really, really cheap axe head made out of plastic, or it was a cool miracle that they just couldn't forget and had to tell the story of. I thought that was, that's pretty cool. So there is a story of a floating axe head in the Bible. So, but here comes the good part. This is a really neat story. There's going to be a pretty powerful lesson here uh about eyes about what you see what you can see and can't see and an awareness of the, that there's more going on around us than you realize that's what the kid story was it was really you know individual praise for their lost cat and we do that these are the everyday things of life but already the word had gone out. Somebody had been looking for the cat the whole time, even though the person's all frazzled and sad and oh no, you know, not every story ends up perfect like that, but God's at work. He's intricately involved in every part of our lives somehow, either holding us up or having to carry us because we can't handle the situation in front of us. And he carries us through difficult circumstances. Uh, again, just praying for this family that is just heavy on my heart right now. But man, my goodness, God's at work in their story too. I and mean, right now it's not pleasant. So pray for peace and grace in their lives. All right, Second Kings 6. When the king of Aram was at war with Israel, he would confer with his officers and say, we'll mobilize our forces at such and such a place. But... Immediately, Elisha, the man of God, would warn the king of Israel, do not go near that place, for the Arameans are planning to mobilize their troops there. So the king of Israel would send word to the place indicated by the man of God. Time and time again, Elisha warned the king so that he would be on the alert there. Hmm. Well, the king of Aram became very upset over this. <laughs> Wouldn't you? How, who's, who's giving them our playlist? Too funny. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> well, here's the king of Aram, pretty ticked off. He calls his officers together and demanded, Which one of you is the traitor? Who's been informing the king of Israel of my plans? It's not us, my lord, the king, one of the officers replied. In fact, they, they knew. They knew what was going on. Why wouldn't they tell the king sooner? But anyway, they knew. But because he asked, here they'll tell him. It's not us. Elisha, the prophet in Israel, tells the king of Israel, even the words you speak in the privacy of your bedroom. Go and find out where he is, the king commanded, so I can send troops to seize him. 
That's what he really, want, really wants to do, not just seize him. And the report came back, well, Elisha is at Dothan. So one night, the king of Aram sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city. Now, here's what's kind of funny. Um, if, if Elisha knew where they're going to attack, um, did he know this was going to happen? That's a good question. Never thought of that before. Let's keep going. <laughs> when the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Let me say that again. Now, I thought this might have been Elisha, but it says, when the servant of the man of God got up the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elisha. Oh, dear. Don't be afraid, Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Wink, wink. Ha! Huh. Then Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. Can you imagine? I, I think Elisha must have known. I think he knew. He didn't, it did not express in the text that he was surprised and he definitely was not afraid. He tells the servant, don't be afraid because there's more on our side than on their side. Oh my goodness. Can you just imagine the, the terror of this poor servant kid? Well, it gets better. As the Armenian army advanced towards him, Elisha prayed, O Lord, please make them blind. So the Lord struck them with blindness, as Elisha had asked. Now, I'd love for God to answer my prayers that quickly and that specifically. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? I got a lot of ideas up my sleeve. And anyway, we'll leave that alone. Just kidding. Um, but he prays, Lord, make them blind, and they became blind. Then Elisha went out and told them, You've come to the wrong place. This isn't the right city. Follow me and I'll take you to the man you were looking for. This is so funny. Just, just think of this. Here this army shows up at the city, surrounds the place. They're clearly surrounded. It's a pretty serious army, okay? Blinds them all. And then Elisha has the guts to come out and say, hm, You guys are at the wrong house. No, 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 no. See the numbers on the door? They're upside down. Wrong house. Let's take you over to the right one. So he leads them to the city of Samaria. As soon as they had entered Samaria, Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, now open their eyes and let them see. Daytime, nighttime. Isn't this hilarious? This is great. Their eyes are suddenly opened and they discovered they were in the middle of Samaria, their enemy city. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine? Uh, talk about um, getting caught. <laughs> this is a brutal, brutal image. Well, when the king of Israel saw them, he shouted to Elisha, My father, should I kill them? Should I kill them? And here is another incredible, incredible lesson for you and I when it comes to seeing correct images of God in the scriptures. Okay, There's lots of incorrect ones. They are incorrect and many are incomplete. Here is another um, uh, um, example of that. So the king says, so should I take them out? Hey, you brought them to me. Is this like a free slaughter? And Elisha says, no, no, of course not. Do we kill prisoners of war? Give them food and drink and send them home again to their master. So the king made a great feast for them and then sent them home on their ma uh, to their master. After that, the Armenian raiders stayed away from the land of Israel. Oh my goodness. This is, this is a great lesson, all right? Well, my question would be from this story, how was Elisha able to act and see in faith? This is a big question for all of us. How can we see and act in faith? And I have a hunch this, was, this is about Elisha's continual awareness and communication with God. I think he had, has taken a habitual time 
a, a pattern of behavior and a pattern of his day, how he spends his day just communing with God in constant communication, hearing the voice of God, sometimes speaking. Uh, but this this idea of being able to see in the in, by faith, that was a gift. And there's a couple stories all throughout Scripture. Now, I used to think that there's only a few stories throughout the entire Scriptures that highlights that. So perhaps it's not meant to be the normal day-to-day -day thing. Maybe it's only meant for special people. Mm, no, I, I'm, I don't think so. Because as soon as you begin to say us versus them... Um, or not for me, but for someone else, uh, then we, ha we actually throw away the responsibility of having to learn to listen and listen to the faith already in us. Well, what happened when he prayed for his servant's eyes to be opened? Does that mean Elisha saw all along uh, into the spiritual realm? Could Elisha see um, the chariots of fire the whole time? Like, did he just walk up and boom, had, had dual vision? You know what I mean? Like seeing spiritual and the physical realm? I, we don't know. We just don't know. I, un, unless he already had a deep-seated faith, knowing that God was at work in this. Remember, he, he has been spoken to by God to the, to the other armies were going to attack at certain places. So he's already in the groove he's the sheep and the and the sheep hear the shepherd's voice well he's the sheep and he hears his shepherd's heavenly father's voice he recognizes it and so by the pattern of listening there's a serious trust being built maybe he had no clue of seeing the chariots maybe he didn't have that sight but the servant did the one who was most fearful because the servant needed to see that pretty amazing we can't we can't make anything absolute here you know but there are some things we can take from this here's the last one the heart of god was revealed when the king asked if he should kill the prisoners wow how many times in the bible do we hear stories of um the written text says god's god killed them all or god told them to kill I have a hard time with some of that. And yes, the text is there. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to find another lens for something that's not sitting right. Um, but it's still in the written text. So there's something we can learn from this. This particular spot that we just read from uh, 2 Kings 6. Um, th this is just one little baby picture of how the heart of God is not about killing. And we see that in the New Testament, especially that Jesus revealed the father. He said, none of you have seen the father. None of you know who he is, but I do. And I'll tell you about him. So there's something about Jesus when he came and their perception of who they thought the father was. Jesus was the one who was there to reveal the love of the father. It wasn't so much that God was trying, trying to reveal his son. The son came to reveal the father. This is the gospel. This, it's profound. I love that. Anyway, here we go. Uh, John 5, 17. Now, this is, again, about having the awareness and your eyes open to there's more going on than you know more going on than you may see at any given moment. So listen to this from the New Living Translation. But Jesus replied, My father is always working, and so am I. Huh, what could that mean? It means he's always working. He hasn't stopped. Um, his work is to reveal his creation, to reveal his grace. And so I think if you're wondering, where is God? Does he still love me? Is he involved? Is he mad at me? Is that why all this terrible stuff's happening to me? Did I do something wrong? No. No, you didn't. This is God is totally in love with us. And he wants to reveal his love and acceptance so we rely on him for trust, not our own ingenuity. Because we're pretty good at trying to help God out and he doesn't need our help. Let's take a look at another one. John 17.3 from the Passion Translation. I've got two, two versions here I think you'll like. Eternal life means to know and experience you as the only true God. 
Hmm. And to know and experience Jesus Christ as the son whom you have sent. This is a pretty deep, deep thought for a moment. Let's read it from the New American Standard Bible next, and then we'll, we'll pair them together. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. They are saying the same kind of thing. So in this sense of seeing beyond what we think is going on. Sometimes we're looking at our calendars. We're looking at the news. Uh, oh, no, look what's happening around us. Oh, these world events must be pointing to something bigger going, oh, maybe it's the end of the world. Maybe it's this. Maybe Who knows? And those questions come up, and that's natural. It's fine. But perhaps that isn't the thing we're to be focusing on. Maybe right here, as we're seeing, maybe this is about us knowing and experiencing God in a very deep personal way because he's the one that's been sent to live in us and jesus does live in us so whatever circumstance you're going through maybe the circumstance is causing an anxiety in you because that's all you're seeing is the is the problem perhaps pause step back and look at christ instead focus your eyes on him we're going to cover a couple of verses on that as well Let's keep going. Psalm 46.10. Oh, ooh, right. This one. Be still and know that I am God. Young's literal translation says, desist and know that I, God, or am God. And the Passion translation says, surrender your anxiety. Be silent and stop striving and you will see that I am God. Now, <laughs> It's kind of funny. Well, how can we be still? Of course I'm being still. I can't go anywhere. We're supposed to stay home, at least here in our part of, of the country. And, uh, well, this is a different stillness. This is not about inactivity. This is about stillness and know that I am God. And honestly, here's the funny part. He is God and you're not. <laughs> you know, sometimes we like to control and make sure things are fine. Uh, I like to plan ahead and make sure things are strategically ready for the next event. I'm wired that way. But sometimes I get too concerned about making sure everything will work out and forget to realize, no, 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 God's got this. He does. And he's using our gifts to, to plan for the future. But there's time to stop and just be still. It's in that stillness, the sense of awe comes. I, this morning I had a really neat opportunity um, to, like, here I'm, we're at St. James Church, Lutheran Church in downtown Elmira, and uh, the sanctuary is not being used here, and our church doesn't use that part. But um, I had a chance to just be in there today and be still. I hadn't done that for a long time. I did that when, I, when we first moved in. But I haven't done that for a long time, and it was good. It was just to just to stop and breathe in the stillness of God in a way. You know, I knelt and I prayed. Uh, no, I don't have to do that, but I did. I wanted to, so I, I listened to my want. And it was good. It was good to stop. And this uh, from the Passion Translation here, the idea of surrendering your anxiety. Yeah, I didn't realize I had anxiety building and stress building my family probably knows that but <laughs> um but honestly it was neat just to do that I'm, I'm, i want to do that a bit more yeah hey and lent is coming soon so maybe we'll talk about that and the a pattern of uh, uh, uh the journey to easter how how can we even though lent isn't part of our tradition let's find some benefits of that tradition that are actually meaningful so well anyway we'll we'll see what happens with that so this is about focus. Here we go. In Luke 8, verse 10, it says, He said, You have been given a teachable heart to perceive the secret hidden mysteries of God's kingdom realm. But to those who don't have a listening heart, my words are mere stories. Even though they have eyes, they're blind to the true meaning of what I say. And even though they listen, they won't receive full revelation. Ouch. This is a great idea of uh, uh, reminding us of what we see, what we perceive. Um, hence, some of the arguments we have with people, whether it's the political arguments, health and safety precaution uh, arguments, or theological arguments. 
each one of us perceives, sees something through a certain lens, not just uh, the immediate lens, but through a historical lens of what brought us to their current belief. Here we have something really cool going on. God is saying, I, uh, he's given us a teachable heart to perceive. You have all, we have all, I have, you have been given a spirit or a heart to perceive. Maybe, maybe our, one of our prayers should be, Father, please open my heart to perceive. Like Joshua was saying this morning, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Well, how about see deep inside perceive see that kind of perceive my goodness this, this should draw us to the awe and wonder of the one we believe in so just like that servant had his eyes opened up to seeing something else that was going on well god's at work in you and i right now he is drawing drawing as in pulling dragging all of us towards himself not that we're distant. Please, that can set up a, a wrong perception. But the idea of dragging us, drawing us to himself. Yes, he's in us. There is no separation. All right? Christ is in us. But in our minds, we can be far off and to be drawn back to the oneness of the one who is in us is really, really important because we're so distracted with the things going on around us. Luke eleven thirty four to 36. <laughs> The eyes of your spirit allow revelation light to enter your being. When your heart is open, the light floods in. When your heart is hard and closed, the light cannot penetrate and darkness takes its place. Open your heart and consider my words. Watch out that you do not mistake your opinions or yeah, opinions for revelation light. Ouch. Ooh, that's a that can poke hard. And if your spirit burns with light, fully illuminated with no trace of darkness, you will be a shining lamp, reflecting rays of truth by the way you live. Wow. Listen, this whole idea of light and darkness, <laughs> this is huge. You know, we've talked about this many times, but this is about the eyes of our spirit seeing. Now, our physical eyes can see something. We can see each other. I can see my empty cup of coffee that is now useless and needs a refill or i can say wait a minute i'm already filled up i've got the fullness of christ in me wow there's something to celebrate the the, the redirect to see spiritually what's going on in us and the light that's in us take that to heart and see how that hits your heart luke 11 34 to 36 Acts 26, 17 to 18. Again, really powerful. This is really, really cool. I will rescue you from the persecution of your own people and from the hostility of other nations that I will send to you. And you will open their eyes to their true condition so that they may turn from darkness to the light and from the power or dominion of Satan to the power of God. By placing their faith in me, they will receive, there's the word receive, the total forgiveness of sins and be made holy, taking hold of the inheritance that I give to my children. This word receive is critical, all right? It's not a transactional thing, <coughs> as if um, once they do this, then the offer comes. No, let's take a look at the word receive. Lambano is what this means, uh, transliterated. Um, but it means to take what is one's own, meaning it's already yours. This forgiveness is already yours. You and I are already forgiven. So taking what's already yours, but they may not perceive that it's theirs, okay? They think it's a new gift, a new thing, but it's already theirs. To claim, to procure for oneself, to admit, ooh, there's a good one, uh, to receive. To receive what is offered, not to refuse or reject. There are so many who reject the love of God. And, and I have a hunch that many people reject God's love because of the crazy people calling themselves Christians. I think it's his, the, some of the Christ followers who look nothing like Jesus that are probably the problem. Not, not Jesus. Anybody who really hears the truth and recognizes it. I think people who don't believe in Jesus, when they hear truth, they know it's true. 
the, there's no question. They have the discernment already. What? How, how can they have the discernment already? Because the light shines in them already. We talked about this. It's not absent. It's there. So, and this, this is... This is how we perceive. Like when I see people I work with or uh, when I go around to wherever, I don't, well, now we can't go as much, but I see people as in the light. I perceive all of creation in Christ. I perceive every human as a child of God. Wow, that changes my perspective. That, that eliminates a lot of judgment. Romans 5.8 says this, Christ arrives on time. To make this happen. He didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready. (laughs) He presented himself for this sacrificial death when we were far too weak and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. And even if we hadn't been so weak, we wouldn't have known what to do anyway. We can understand someone dying for a person worth dying for, and we can understand how someone good and noble would inspire us to selfless sacrifice, but... God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in in sacrificial death while we were of no use whatsoever to him. See, this is awareness. This is the eyes to see. God was at work behind the scenes in our darkness. When we were blind, when we didn't believe in this God we say we believe in, even if you're not sure right now, for those who may be watching, who, I don't know if this God's really real, like this, this, this is a lot of questions. That's great. But he's been at work behind the scenes for you. He's already done everything necessary to make you right. He's made you right, even without your permission. (laughs) Imagine that. Working behind the scenes, out of love. Hebrews 3 says that Jesus is greater than Moses. That's just the title. It's not in the actual text. At verse 3 it says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, you are now made holy, and each of you is invited to the feast of your heavenly dwelling or calling so fasten your thoughts fully onto jesus whom we embraced as our apostle and king priest fix your eyes on jesus fix fasten focus focus daniel son oh my goodness yes this is this is what we're called to do um, in the Passion Translation, uh, verse 1, it says, uh, Hebrews 12, it says, As for us, we have, all, sorry, we have all of these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds. So we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination for the path has been already marked out before us. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is powerful. Uh, there's, there's a reason that we're called to keep our eyes focused on him. So we don't get distracted. So that we don't get tripped up on those things. Uh, sometimes our past wounds really, really freeze us from um, the ability to heal emotionally. And yet God has and want, he's healed you already, but you may not be experiencing that healing. He wants you to have that. He wants you to see, first of all, you are healed because he has healed us. Now, I, I don't know how that works when it comes to our physical healing, but I can see it in the emotional realm, in the solical realm, for sure. It, it, it has to do with belief and shifting belief. And only he can do that for you. It's pretty wild. How many more have I got? Oh, my goodness. Um, okay. Yeah, you're right, Lori. We're not going to finish today. My wife said to me yesterday, you don't ever finish. You always have a you go on. <laughs> but hey, oh well. Uh, let's, let's, I'll take just a couple more minutes here. In Hebrews 12, in Passion Translation, says, He took away from the natural realm and we fasten our gaze, here we go, onto Jesus who birthed faith within us. Did you catch that? Your faith that you have? It's been given to you as a gift. You cannot muster up faith. You can't create a faith. Whoever has said, and I, unfortunately, you know, after pastoring for 30 years, I know I've said this, I've taught this, you must have more faith. Ah, that implies you don't have any. 
and it implies it's up to you to get it and maintain it. No, 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 no. Right here, Jesus birthed your faith within you and leads you forward into faith's perfection. His example is this. Because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing that you would be his, he endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. This is a beautiful picture of how Jesus was focused on the purpose of going to the cross to make us new creations in him, however that happened, because he saw us already complete of what's coming. He saw the fruit of what was coming. His eyes were focused. This is the last, uh, uh, yeah, okay, that's, I was waiting for this one. Um, a number of years ago, um, Lori and I moved to Barrie to work with a church plant. We loved the city of Barrie. It was wonderful. And uh, um, the pastor, Greg Funk, um, he's a really good mentor. I really respect him. I still do. Uh, I miss him. Um, but one of the first lessons he did, he took me to a shopping mall. And he brought me to this art exhibit that was in the center of the mall, just in the open area. And all these pictures, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't see what the pictures were. So it didn't make any sense. But they were called stereograms. And I'm going to show you a picture in just a moment. Um, and I'm going to try and go full screen in just a second. Um, but this this stereogram. Uh, he said, "Tell me what you see." Well, I couldn't see. And then he he encouraged me to slow down you know, the ADHD kid. <laughs> and he said, focus on the picture. Stare at it intently until you see something. And I was getting frustrated. I said, come on, this is, this, there's nothing. It's all lines, it's all whatever. I couldn't figure it out. And then I saw it. Well, I'm going to show you one now. So I'm going to get your attention. I'm going to get you to see if you can stare at this picture. I'm going to go to full screen. Well, that isn't going to work because my microphone, I didn't set up the microphone to work for that. But I'm just going to, I'll have to post this online now. But maybe you can even see it from this. But if you can stare at this picture, um, and, and what do you see? Because when you stare and you find out what's there, it'll, it'll come out. It'll turn into a 3D image. It, it's stunning. Um, there, there'll be an elephant down here, continent of Africa in the top. And then off, off to the right, in the top right, is an, a rhinoceros. But it's there for those who will take time to focus. I'll post the picture on Facebook um, or email to whoever wants it or text it to whoever would like to see this and practice this focus. This is really cool. Like, this just looks like very interesting art. Isn't that nice? But there's, there's three full images in there if we focus and look. I'm, I think you're, you're going to be surprised at what's there. Um, but for now, we're going to wrap up today because um, that's enough time already. We're, we're hitting the 11 o'clock just after 11. Navigating forward. We'll come back for part two of, of today's uh, um, talk on what do you see? Do your glasses need uh, refocusing or fixing? Do you, do you need a new prescription? Uh, are there things in your blind spots that you're not noticing? Well, God is involved in those blind spots. He's involved in every activity of your life, caring for you, loving you, speaking messages of encouragement and hope, even when things are crashing in around you. Uh, it may not even be necessary to ask God why. That's a natural question. Why? Why is this happening to me? And honestly, I, I, I don't know. We, we can't answer why. We can't answer uh, that question with absolute certitude. certitude. We, we just can't because we don't know. Hindsight might tell us. Hindsight later may not. We don't know. But perhaps, perhaps it's about surrender right now. Giving up. Saying, God, I don't understand this. I don't have an answer for it. All I see is darkness and, or I see disaster all around me. What do I do? Listen, this is where God carries you. This is where he holds you. You may not even perceive that. And you're allowed to do your hissy fit and your anger, your emotional rants, you name it. And he's not offended by it. That's really important to know today. He's there listening. And maybe he, even, he might even send someone to you to be a listening ear. Something, someone tangible. Because I think God uses people to help other people. 
he uses people to answer prayers too and and to be a voice so it's pretty cool all right that's it for now so next week uh, join us again, same time, uh, just before 10 o'clock. We start the countdown. If you've been encouraged and you're part of Hope Fellowship, I encourage you to uh, make your donations. We can sure use them. And then we're going to go to the chat, Zoom chat, right after. So if you want to join us, send me a Facebook message, and I'll um, uh, send you the link as soon as I switch this off and get rolling. So give me one minute to turn all this off, and then we'll go over to Zoom, and we'd love to say hello to some of you over there. That's it. Thanks so much. You guys have a really, really, really great day.